and you're very welcome to the Founders live stream for the Mobile Creator Academy. Say hello, Mark. Hello, Mark. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and we, it's never we, funny, but I do it every time. We, we, we spent the last 15 minutes trying to make sure that the live stream, as we aim for it, would end up in all the different platforms that we pointed it. So we're using StreamYard, um, which you may be familiar with. I've um, used it multiple times in the past between the Mobile Creator Summit last year and also the Mobiography Awards. So it's a fantastic platform. The thing is, I've never used it on Twitter before. So right now, I'm basically trying to keep an eye over here. If you, if you see me do this a lot, it's not that I'm ignoring what Mark is saying. It's that I'm checking to see that it's turned up in all the different locations it's supposed to be. So we're supposed to be live on YouTube, on the MojoFest Facebook group, and on the MCA Twitter account. Hopefully, hopefully, you're going to find us in one of those three different platforms. Um, clearly, if you could say hello, just drop us a quick comment. I have found personally... YouTube is usually the best one. I can see a few comments coming in. So Konstantinos is there. Konstantinos, I hope you're still back in Greece, sir. I hope you're safe and well. Um, Richard Lackey has joined us as well from Dubai. Richard, lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. And also Courtney Jones has joined us from Seattle. So thanks, guys, for letting us know at least that you're seeing us and hearing us. That's really, really useful. Um, so we're, we're expecting to run... I guess 45 minutes to an hour, okay? That's that's roughly what we're aiming for. And we have a deck, a slide deck that we want to share with you, which talks a little bit about what our vision for the Mobile Creator Academy is. Hopefully that's why you're with us. And then the second thing is we've tried to kind of, because we've talked about gamification and quizzes and how we're trying to make the platform really interactive. We've tried to kind of hijack, for want of a better word, the platform that we're going to use for doing the quizzes, which is Kahoot. And we're basically going to use um, Kahoot to run a quiz and give away a, a free year subscription to the platform basically at the end of the show. So what I'm going to do is, if it's cool with you guys, I'm going to basically bring up the presentation to kind of kick off, and that gives you a chance to download the Kahoot app, because you will need the Kahoot app on your mobile device so that you can play the game, okay? And it's good crack, bit of fun, nice way to wrap up the whole session, so we're probably getting into that soon. So let me just bring up our deck. Very good, and... Um, as I said, we're, we're basically on several different platforms. Uh, hopefully, if you're watching this right now, you don't really need to scan it. But if you are having issues, for instance, if it's buffering or stuttering or anything like that, can I suggest, honestly, the best place to watch is likely to be the YouTube link. And if you go to our link tree, you will see that it's actually embedded into the link tree or you can click on it and go to YouTube. Um, okay, good stuff. Right, so up front, because you're going to see me probably use QR codes quite a lot, um, what I would suggest we do is, if you are joining in, I'm just seeing one comment after coming in from Colleen saying that it hasn't appeared in the Facebook group. I'll have a look at that in a second. Colleen, Mark is, is, is going to talk in a second anyway, so I'll have a quick look at that. At least I know for sure that we're live on Twitter and YouTube. That's good. That's good. Um, but anyway, so if you could, if you could scan the QR code, this is the quickest way to do it. Scan the QR code. It'll bring you to the Kahoot page and allows you to download the iOS or the Android app. That way you'll be able to participate in the competition at the end of the show. And the second thing I would say to you is if that's not working for you, for instance, if your phone is a model that doesn't have QR reader built in, then you can always just go to your app store, Google Play or the iOS app store and search for Kahoot, that same name, K-A-H-O-O-T, free app, and basically get that down on your phone. You basically have about 45 minutes to install it. So even if you're on dodgy broadband, you'll still hopefully be able to get your hands on it. Okay, so with that little bit of admin, if you like, out of the way, let's talk a little bit about why we're here, the Mobile Creator Academy. So um, I think the best place to start is to say the Academy is live now. It's actually technically been in a kind of a, a private live mode for several months, and we've been testing it out. We've basically been onboarding some good friends of the Mojo community, basically, to test us and give it feedback. Um, and you can join now. And I've noticed even just before we came live, a few people have already signed up, which is great. I'll give them a name check as we come to the end of the show. But if you're on the fence, understandably so, what we want to try and do is to answer questions that you might have. So we're going to do a short presentation to explain what we're hoping to achieve. We will take your questions at the end, and then we'll run the quiz as we wrap up the whole session. So that's the plan. So I think probably a good place to start would be to talk about who the hell we are. Now, I know from the names that are popping up in the, the chat within StreamYard right now, pretty much everyone is a friendly face. But nonetheless... You might be watching this and wondering, who are these two laddos? No idea. So, Mark, I'm going to let you kick off, if you will. Tell a little people a little bit who you are and what you do. Let's be honest, then. You just want time to fix your Facebook problem. Um, yeah. My name is Mark Egan. I used to work for the BBC. Um, I was a radio reporter before I crossed to the dark side into television, which I... I found a bit frustrating because, you know, I was used to working by myself in radio and then I had to rely on a team. So 
I was one of the first video journalists, so I had my little backpack, my little camera, made news programs, sports programs, documentaries, all that kind of thing. Now, when I left the BBC, uh, one of the things I specialized in was mobile content, um, because when I trained people, even on slightly bigger cameras, what would happen is that they would go through the training and some people were really talented, and then you'd meet them two months later and they'd say, well, I've not really got access to the camera again. Whereas when phones got better, it was clear that you could basically empower pretty much anybody with the right training and the right kind of commitment to create high quality content on their mobile phones. So I've done training for everybody from, you know, World Health Organization, European Broadcasting Union, um, all over the world, spoken on stages from places like, you know, China, Paris, you name it, sometimes with Glenn, you know, he steals all the glory. Um, and one of the things that I've also been doing is creating content for brands. So out of the journalism side into kind of brands. So around big events where you have, uh, you know, maybe through digital agencies or basically household name brands who want content of a high quality very, very quickly at big events. So that's what I've been doing. And I think like with Glenn, um, this has kind of been a passion for me for a number of years because I don't always see this as just something about the technology. This is a way of empowering people to tell stories in a, a different way, in a more flexible way. So that's a bit about me. Glenn, if you fix the problem yet, can you talk again? I can talk. Or should yeah, I go but, back to my childhood? Yeah, <laughs> well, we could go there, but we'll save it for later after after we've gone live. Um, the Facebook group has rejected the link into StreamYard. I did sync it last night. But, you know, Murphy's Law, maybe it's a sign. I don't know if you're into that or into star signs, but maybe it's the MojoFest group or Facebook, who I loathe on several different levels, basically giving me a message. So we're just going to say I posted in the group. Thank you, Colleen, for sharing the actual the YouTube link within the Facebook community group. Anyone there can basically just dive onto the YouTube link. And hopefully they'll be able to join us. Again, just dipping in now to the comments coming in within StreamYard. So, um... Uh, Brendan, lovely to have you join us. Thanks a million. Um, uh, Bernard Lilla's with us from Hamburg, actually. I just noticed Sue is with us from Canada. Um, hi, guys. Lovely to have you with us. Um, just to echo what Mark has just said, again, for any of you who are joining the stream who don't know us. Um, so obviously, my name is Glenn Mulcahy. Like Mark, spent 20 years in broadcast news um, in, in the Irish National Broadcaster. Started my journey as a trainer back in 2006 when I was lucky enough to be sent to the BBC to do a trainer course. Um, and I've been pretty much training people ever since. Originally, for the first four or five years, it was video journalism. Again, very similar to Mark in many ways. And then kind of stumbled upon mobile, to be brutally honest. But nonetheless, I've, I've had a, a love affair ever since and <laughs> have never really walked away from it. In fact, I gave up a very, you know, well, reasonably well-paid job in RTE about four years ago to go into this full-time. Um, so now I'm completely self-employed and I basically do mostly, to be fair, mostly training for big brands and uh, other broadcasters. And in many ways, I think Mark has touched on this, in many ways that, that was part of the motivation for the MCA. So to explain that, give a bit of logic to it. So, you know, over the last six, seven years in particular, since, since Mojo Fest was born in 2015, I, I quite regularly get asked by people, oh, when are you gonna run your next in-person training course for, for, you know, for individuals, uh, public facing courses? And it really made me sit back and kind of think like I've done it twice. That's it. I've only done it twice. I usually do it through other agencies and other brands and companies. And as a result of it, the individuals usually miss out on the opportunity to do that type of training. And then the other piece of information that regularly comes back, and Mark, echo this, is this is something you've experienced, is people will say, I can't release people off the roster for a full day. I hear that so often. So, you know, you'll, you'll have a course, you go into a brand, or now, obviously, for the next little while, we'll do it online again. Um, and then you'll, you'll have two or three people who are no-shows because the story broke and they got assigned to their day job and that's just the way it is. So we were aware of these issues or challenges and, and they've been kind of, you know, niggling away at us at both, I think, for several years now. And we both looked at different possible solutions and different possible ways to address this. So both of us have what I would call pre-recorded courses sitting somewhere in the internet. And there's a couple of them. I have a few on journalism.co.uk. I know for a fact that Mark, Mark, what platform are you on again? Well, it's my own website, markeganvideo.com. Yeah, you know, so we both have pre-recorded content, courses that you can sign up to, to do online. However, I've noticed, particularly in the last six months, part, I guess, of the whole momentum of working from home, that when you do the short, snappy one-day or two-day course, people often come on those courses, get great feedback. But then the bottom line is, is when you check in with them, could be two months, could be three months later, and say, how are you getting on? Any feedback, any questions? 
often the feedback that you get is, um, well, yeah, it was great there for a little while. And then kind of, uh, you know, there was an issue and um, I haven't really done it that much since, to be honest. And people are almost not ashamed, but they're a little bit embarrassed to say, you know, I did your course and loved it, but I haven't really done much with it. And it re- that really started to bug me. You know, I mean, the idea from, from Mojo Khan back in 2015 was to bring people together and to provide an impetus behind this whole idea, this concept of mobile content creation. And the bottom line is, is if people are failing at a hurdle, our job as trainers is to try and come up with a solution for that problem. And we think, I echo me here from my mark, but we think that what we've come up with MCA is going to fix this issue, as we believe, okay? So enough about the two of us. We could do this for the whole hour, but we're not going to. We're going to talk a bit now about the actual platform. So I guess the first question is the who, what, when, where, how, and why. So why is it needed? Well, I've touched on a couple of the key points. You might have seen these if you follow us on social media. I've been pushing these out over the last couple of days as a kind of a tee up to the thing. So the bottom line is, is short person, short in-person training courses are wonderful. They're great. They're the mainstay of my business. But the one challenge, the one key challenge is that people do not have support after the two days. Usually there are exceptions. There are brands we will go into who have got a very strategic vision and a plan and KPIs for how it's going to be implemented. And they will often make sure that one member of staff has been trained up to kind of a super user level. And they're the support person. If you do that, that is a guaranteed better solution than just leaving people loose to their own devices. Okay. So support is a big part for me anyway, for why people need continual learning. The second thing is, as I've just said, a lot of the courses are pre-recorded. And that's great if you are the type of person who learns, who's self-motivated and who will basically bring yourself back to the computer regularly over a period of time to basically do these pre-recorded videos. Some people are. That's great. But in my experience, if you look at the actual performance of courses from people who start to people who complete, it can be anywhere between 20 and 30 percent of the total people that started a course. So it's quite a lot of drop off. Again, in my experience, when you do live sessions, which are interactive, where I'm talking to you, I'm not just speaking to the wall and you're hoping that it makes sense. Those are harder to ignore. As long as it's an appointment thing and you know exactly when that session is going to be live, it is far better as an outcome for you to basically engage in that live environment. Okay. So again, that's another key thing about MCA. Um, Okay. So again, two more things and then I'll pass over to Mark. So I've, I've been blessed to have the opportunity to to contribute to and to write forwards for some of the leading books that have been written about mobile journalism. I'll give a shout out here to to Vitsa and Bjorn, whose book on mobile journalism is a definitive that I often recommend on every one of the courses that I do. Um, And again, some people love that. Some people love to research. And then once they've done all the research, they will then move on into the actual, I'll try now because I'm fully briefed. I understand everything. Now I'll give it a go. But not everyone has that learning model. I'm I'm the guy who buys something from Ikea, takes it home, unwraps it and starts sticking things together. And it's only if I hit a road, road, roadblock that I'm going to go and have a look at the manual, see what the hell I did wrong. Okay. So different people, different learning styles. But again, we've tried to factor in all those different learning styles into the academy. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. And then the last thing is that idea of not just having the trainers as your point of contact, but having a learning experience where you're learning with your peers on a fortnightly assignment basis, giving feedback, sharing tips and tricks that you've discovered along the way, that really, really does help an awful lot. Okay, so those for me are the core core reasons why the academy and the format that we've pushed pushed it out basically is needed. Mark, why mobile? Well, <laughs> I mean, obviously, you and I are convinced about this, but you know, sometimes people thought the whole mobile creation thing was a bit of a fad. People get excited about it for a few years, but when you think about it, think about the audience. Like, how do you consume content? I mean, the old days where you know, people huddle around the TV. It just, you look at the viewing figures for TV programs now um, compared to what you get online, the difference is huge. So the audience is on mobile. You're consuming on mobile. So it makes sense now to create content on mobile for mobile, especially if you're creating for something like Instagram. So if you're using stuff like Instagram, you know, you can then access the filters, the stickers, all that kind of thing. What you create is native to the platform. Whereas, you know, often, you know, people can be accused of actually just basically making TV and shoving it online. Um, With the mobile, you can create all sorts of formats, um, you know, aspect ratios, styles. It's so flexible. So with the audience on mobile, it makes sense to create on mobile. 
But the other thing is um, when you think about the skills and the value of these skills, you know, if you can create content on mobile, so that means you can create content anywhere, anytime, in any format, how valuable is that skill? And it's something, you know, like I said, I work for brands. You could be at a huge event, um, you know, Las Vegas or somewhere. If if they need a live stream, you can do a live stream. If they need uh, photography, you can do photography. If you need to do quickly edit a little video package and put it on whatever platform you like, you can do absolutely anything. And if you've learned to use this tool properly, and I, I always say that one of the problems with the mobile phone is it's got a kind of a branding issue. Because in the past, you know, a professional tool looked different from what everybody else had, whereas now everybody has a phone. So in a sense, people don't take it as seriously. Whereas when you look at what it's capable of, um, the ability to create high quality content on this is hugely valuable. It doesn't matter, you know, what organization you are, whether you're a news publisher, a, a solo entrepreneur with a business, uh, an NGO, a charity, whatever it is, you need content. So the question to ask is not what's the best camera, it's what's what's the best workflow and the mobile workflow is so simple you know you shoot something you can kind of edit it share it all on the same device so it's a bit of a no-brainer but it's a skill that i think is incredibly valuable and it's going to get even more valuable as time goes on. So it's something that i personally think that we actually are only at the beginning of this kind of mobile revolution. Yep, 100%. And like i said, both of us gave up, you know, the classic pensionable secure jobs to go out on our own to basically, you know, to train people to share this. So we're, we're not tourists. We're a hundred percent in it. Um, anyway, on that bombshell MCA, like I said, it has been live and it's been live for, like I say, several months right now, ultimately to try and sum it up in a sentence, it is effectively a community a network, if you like of, of trainers, but also of people who are doers, pioneers who are actually making content with mobile, whether that's filmmaking, whether that's journalism, whether that's social media storytelling, all of the above. OK, and in the first couple of months after we actually launched the platform, when we were going through the process of testing it, we were very much in, in the process of basically onboarding people who we respect within the community and whose opinion we respect in the community to get a sense, basically, of what their thoughts on the platform were. You see some of the names popping up as you see that little trailer right now. So. What will you get if you sign up? Because you know that there's going to be a course at the back of it, and we're going to talk about that in a moment, but there's more. It's not just training. Mark. Yeah. So, I mean, before we sort of talk about the actual modules, one thing to say is that um, there's fortnightly members-only live chat. So one of the things that Glenn mentioned is we're very much, you know, following the whole kind of gamification thing. When, we're, when we say gamification, that kind of has a bad reputation. Often it's called things like, you know, human-centered design. Um, but it's the idea that people learn in a certain way and they're motivated to carry on if things are done in a certain way. So one of the things is, you know, having kind of community. The other thing is having milestones and also having it where that it's challenging, but it's manageable. Um, and one of the problems like Glenn mentioned earlier is that firstly, often people hit a roadblock and they don't have anybody to help. And even when we do face-to-face -face training, we come in, we do the training, a week later, somebody uh, has a problem. And, you know, sometimes I've literally been on a holiday sometimes, turned on my phone and had urgent messages from some broadcaster in Northern Europe and somebody had a problem and there was nobody else who could help them. So these live chats allow you to come on, ask questions, get advice from people. But not only that is we want this to be a hub for best practice. And one of the things that we want to do is in certain topics have the ability to maybe go deep. So perhaps have some guest experts who will come on and maybe go very deep on a very, very specific topic. So this is not just about, you know, learning to use the tool to a kind of a decent level. We want to really sort of push the boat out and really kind of bring together great experts that you can then ask questions of and really take your kind of mobile content creation to the next level. So again, it's live, so it's very kind of interactive. Glenn. 
Yeah. And so on top of that, obviously, there's the core masterclass. And the masterclass is going to run for the first six months. We'll then review, revisit and decide what the next phase will be. It may be at that stage we have new members. They want to run it again. It may be that we specialize in a particular um, kind of strand of that. We'll talk about that as the course kicks off. But ultimately, the way that we're going to structure the masterclass is you will have a live session, two to two and a half hours, pretty much every Tuesday between seven and nine. That's the target time, GMT. And what will happen is in the interim, so basically week one and week three, you basically will have your live sessions. But in the interim, you'll have an assignment and that assignment will be posted within the group. And basically you'll get peer review from both of us and from some of your fellow trainees. So there is a kind of a landmark to prove to yourself and to us that you've really, really captured and understood what it is that we were basically trying to share with you the previous week. And those ongoing assignments, as well as the participation in the live sessions, is what basically will culminate in the awarding of the actual accredited certificate at the end of the actual six months. So you'll get a certificate saying that you've completed the Mobile Creator Academy course, and we'll have a breakdown basically on the type of content you're going to cover. We'll talk about that actually in a couple of slides more. Yeah, I mean, just on that um, credit, two things actually to say on that. The six months, um, obviously, there will be things happening after six months, which we'll talk about. Um, but part of that is so that you can basically do it you know, I know people are busy, um, that it's it's very structured and you will have time to kind of focus on one thing, nail it, practice it, get some feedback and everything, and then we move on to the next thing. So a lot of people with online courses, they get kind of overwhelmed. There's like 500 videos to watch and they kind of do a few and kind of lose their way. Um, with this, it's over a period of time, very structured, but at the end of it, you'll get a certification. So often when people ask, you know, myself or Glenn, or can you recommend uh, somebody who can create on mobile in a particular country, a particular topic? Um, you know, sometimes we know people and other times, well, we can give them names, but we don't know what they know or how good they are. Uh, so something about when you come through this and you have completed it, you will get that accreditation. And there'll be another benefit to that, which we'll mention in a moment, Glenn. Yeah, exactly. And now another perk. So Mojo Fest, some of you know, looking at the names that have popped up. Hello, um, Gibran, Ashraf Gibran and uh, Silas has joined us as well. And a few others. Sorry if I've skipped your name. I will get back to it for the questions, obviously. But um, so Mojo Fest is what, what became the independent version of MojoCon. Not to go down that rabbit hole, but back 2015, 2016, 2017, International Mobile Journalism, Journalism Conference run with my former employer, RTE. And then when I left RTE, it went independent, it became Mojo Fest, and we got to do two years of it before COVID struck. And it's now been cancelled for two years running, but it is due, inshallah, it is due to return to us in May this year in London. And for the first time ever, it will be free, whereas previously you were paying a premium to attend the conference. Now, without going too far down the whole Mojo Fest thing and turn this into a Mojo Fest talk, all I will talk about is, is that I expect because the actual tickets are now free, and if people have built up enough confidence in, you know, social distancing and all that sort of stuff, the precautions around COVID, I'm hoping that there will be a very su substantial gathering in London in May of people involved in mobile content production. If you come to the event, there will be a special invite only for members gathering for people who are members of the MCA while we're all in London. OK, not going to say the venue, but I'm really excited about the venue. Um, but nonetheless, this is something that's already being planned. And, you know, I think. By far, the thing that I hear back from people, and I've heard it year after year after year, the main reason people come to the event is, you know, hopefully we good, really, really good speakers. I'd like to think so. But also because of the networking, the chance to sit down, have a coffee or a pint with someone, have a deep dive, shoot the breeze. There have been discussions in the past about the idea of doing kind of brainstorming sessions. Dan Rubin came up with this amazing concept of doing this kind of roundtable brainstorming. I would love to do that. I think MCA may well be the platform to enable us to do that type of stuff while still under some level of lockdown with COVID. So anyway, one of the perks, invite only att uh, 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 attendance at a special gathering for MCA people basically at Mojo Fest. And also, just as Mark said, so every second week we'll have a learning session and then we'll have a kind of a live session. But we will have guest speakers and we will also have kind of how to sessions, small little divots, takeaways, stuff that will be useful. You know, I was watching one that Mark did earlier on today, just um, on Instagram about how to do the presenting to camera and tips and tricks for getting the best results. It's stuff like that. Really useful takeaways that you can apply to your day to day content production kind of workflow that I think will be really, really valuable on top of the core learning from the masterclass. Now, Mark. So this next one is something that we're quite excited about, which is down the line. <clears throat> Again, what we're trying to do here a lot of the time is 
solve particular problems we see in the community and also think, you know, how can we push this further, push this whole industry further? And one of the things that we're constantly being asked is, um, like I said earlier, you know, can you recommend a good trainer? Can you recommend somebody here who could go to a big, a big event and create some great video content for us? Um, and just recently, I was literally, I was speaking to some very, very talented mobile content creators who are doing really well. But they said, you know, one of the issues is that we know there are more people out there who need our skills, but they don't know where to find us. It's kind of all kind of disjointed. So what we are working on, and we've we have a platform, we're kind of building it in the background, is to create a, a directory, a database of both mobile content creators and trainers in mobile content. And this is something which um, will be separate from MCA, but it's all part of the whole thing about trying to build this community, trying to you know build this industry. Um, so this is something that if you have gone through MCA, um, you will get premium access. So again, if you go to a directory normally, you can see there are certain people who kind of get kind of promoted. And you know, like the blue tick or check mark you get on Twitter, you know, the people who are sort of accredited, those sorts of things. So it will be a benefit on that directory as well if you're an MCA member. So that isn't ready yet. We hope to launch it fairly soon, uh, but that's something we're also excited about. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, like I, I tried, a, not a version of that to be fair, but I had a map way back in 2013 when I used to do my old TV VJ blog. Um, I actually had a thing called Z Maps. You can go back and search it. It's there. I checked the other day um, where I started to pin people who basically were kind of, you know, the influencers, the movers and shakers within the Mojo community. It, it is that, but it's in a proper structured way, a chance for you to basically, you know, for want of a better word, share your wares, talk about your skills, talk about your services, talk about your experience. But the key thing is, and Marcus said it, but just to explicitly say it, if you go through the MCA program, you get a special badge to say that you are a certified MCA trainee. And to bring us to the next point, in due course, we will have another tier within the platform, which will make you the op will give you the option of becoming an MCA certified trainer. So our ultimate aim within the next 12 months is to run it as also a trainer program. And as part of that trainer program, we're gonna give a few extra things. So one of them is, you'll go through the same kind of training that we went through when we were becoming trainers. So you will have a train the trainer module on it, but you will also effectively, you sign up with us, you effectively will get all of our slides and our mentoring, and you will then effectively go onto our short list of recommended trainers. Should we not be able to do an in-person gig? And both of us regularly get invites, bless us, lucky that we are. We st still get invites from overseas clients saying, can you come to Saudi Arabia most recently to do some training? And it's not always practical. And I have to be perfectly honest, right now I'm a bit twitchy about getting on a plane for a seven hour flight. If I know someone has been through the MCA train, the trainer program, is a certified MCA trainer, and they're somewhere in the Middle East, they will be the name that I will be pushing forward to that client to say, there's a person on the ground, very cl close to you, that actually has done the training with me and is a certified trainer that I personally endorse and support. They're your guy or girl. That's what we're going to do ultimate long game. So it's not just to learn how to do the skills, but ultimately, we're going to try and actually develop a, a certified team of trainers that can basically work as part of the directory and basically take some of the work that we do internationally as well. So it's got a it's got a growing long game, if you will, beyond just doing a six month course. I guess that's the point. And just just a point on that, um, you know, because what some people don't understand is that sometimes you have a big organization, they need lots of training and they come to you and you say, well, I'm not able to do it. And even when you try and just throw other names at them, they're like, yeah, but will they do it like you did? Because we heard that you did a good training at another place. And um, whereas when you have this kind of accreditation, they know that it's a little bit more systemized. It's kind of the, the approach worked. Um, so if they're happy with the way the approach worked at one place, you know, even if it's not the same trainer, they're, they're more likely to kind of be interested in a trainer who has that accreditation. So it's basically a, a mark, to, it's like a trust mark. You know, if I go out to get a, a builder to do some building work, you know, if they've got some kind of trust certification or something like that, even if it's not the builder I've used before, it gives me a certain level of kind of confidence in it all. So, um, so that's, yeah, another thing that um, is on the horizon. And I think it's something which again, will um, help us grow this community. Absolutely. And I, there's for me, for me, coming from a TV background, I, I've personally witnessed people who have done short courses and then announced that they're now training. And I'm, while I'm not belittling people who do that, more power to them. 
the bottom line is, is that in the big scheme of things, when I hear back from a client that I've worked for that they had someone else do training for them and it was a disaster, that damages this entire movement. That is not a good thing. So this is not us trying to do any sort of a land grab. This is us trying to standardize the training so that people who are offering training can make sure that they're hitting the same key deliverables that we've worked the last 10 years to develop and perfect. Okay, so that's that's what our ultimate aim is now. Hopefully, roughly around this point, you're kind of going, this all sounds really good. Now they're going to give us the bad news, right? Okay, so let's talk a bit about um, who we're aiming as the target audience and then also how much we're hoping to charge. So first of all, who's it for? Mark. So I said earlier that, you know, it's it's for everybody. But, you know, just to clarify it, um, social media managers. So if you're a social media manager, you constantly need to be creating content. Often there are events, launches, things like that. You need to maybe, you know, grab an interview and get it up quickly, that kind of thing. So this is a, a huge skill. Uh, corporate social responsibility. It's, it's not about just what you're doing, you have to actually show that you're doing it. So very often you have big organizations with great stuff going on and it's not being captured. And it's a crying shame because people have a phone in their pocket. I'm amazed nowadays that there are people in the media industry, and let's face it, most people are now in some way, shape or form in the media industry who don't have the skills to create a decent, high quality bit of content. Um, vloggers, YouTube, I mean, YouTube still huge. I know everybody kind of goes over the, the next shiny thing like TikTok, but YouTube still hugely important. So if you're a YouTube content creator, you want to create high quality content. Again, the phone's getting better. The um, the tablet's getting better. The apps are getting better. The accessories are getting better. I mean, talking about slides, if if I go back to some of the slides I had a few years ago and look at the options for microphones and apps and everything, it's just chalk and cheese compared to what we have today. Um, business owners. Um, again, I cannot believe how many businesses, especially small businesses, um, who could, you know, they could be very nimble, they could show behind the scenes, they could do explainers, they could do ads, they could do all sorts of content, live streams on their phones, but they don't know how to use them properly, both technically, but also in kind of strategy sense. Um, Professional reporters and journalists. I mean, um, we've all seen those videos where the that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've all seen those videos where the star reporter happens to be on the scene of a big breaking story and they're shooting absolutely terrible footage. Their kind of audio is terrible. They've got no idea about lighting, anything like that. And I think, you know, we're getting to the point where if you're going for a job and you don't have the kind of skills that we're talking about, it's it's going to be sort of a huge issue because nowadays you need people to be versatile and to be able to get content efficiently. Because I think that's one of the things that mobile does. It's very efficient. It can be very quick. And like I said earlier, it can be whichever kind of content you want. And then journalism tutors and academics. Now, I've had um, a few panicky <laughs> universities contact me in recent years. And you get on with the, whoever the lecturer is and they'll say, look, between you and me, um, I feel like I've kind of been left behind because even though I didn't leave the newsroom that long ago, it's the skills and the way we worked has changed so much. And I'm not really kind of familiar with the whole kind of mobile workflows and all that kind of thing. So for people in that position, this is a great opportunity to get your skills right back up to date and make sure that you are teaching your students um, the kind of skills that will be valuable, whether they go and work in, you know, a newspaper or a broadcaster or any other kind of website or content creation, creation outlet. If they have these skills, they'll be able to do that. So, and I think Glenn, you've got a few horror stories on this side as well. Well, um, yeah, I, like I, obviously I'm not going to name the particular institution, but I have, this is a legitimate, genuine story. I, I went in to do a one day training course with a group of MA journalism students. I, I do quite a bit actually for MA students. And in this particular course, um, at the end of the day, it was intense and everything else. At the end of the day, I did the usual, any questions, any comments, any feedback that you'd like to give me. And there was this murmuring going on in the group. And I, that always makes me a bit twitchy. It's like, oh God, this sounds like a storm is rumbling in the distance. But then one student stood up and said, I've been nominated as the spokesperson for the group. Do you can take a breath? Here it comes. And she went, we've learned more in the last day than we have in the last four years in this course. And it's actually made us realize that we want our money back from the university. And it was like, I think I should probably leave now. But nonetheless, joking aside, nonetheless, it actually prompted for that university to completely rethink their program. And it now has mobile as one of the core elements of the training course. And this is the way it should be. The students coming off those courses, I lectured uh, on an MA program this last year myself, students coming off that program 
cannot necessarily afford to go out and spend seven, eight, nine thousand euros on high end DSLR camera gear to be able to start shooting stories and starting to make a brand for themselves. That tool in their pocket, man, it's there and it's just begging to be used. You all know the story at this stage. So those are our target audience. What are we looking to charge? So let's frame it with what the typical going rates are for current courses. Okay. I don't think I'm leaving any kind of, you know, cats out of the bags here or anything. What I'm basically going to give you is indicative prices. I'm going to say also that some of these, you will get people who will train for cheaper. You will also get people who will charge more, but these are reasonably fair indicative prices, the going rate, if you will, for both in-person training days and live Zoom interactive sessions. Now, some of you might actually have just fallen off your stool, so I'm going to give you a minute to get back up there and gather yourself. These are not uncommon prices at all, okay? So for a group of eight to 12 participants, somewhere between 17, 50, and 2,000 euros for the day is not uncommon. Uh, if you do the math, then you're breaking it down to 150 per person ballpark. Um, and then for live sessions on Zoom, which usually run two to two and a half hours, but some people do longer, some people do shorter. But again, I'm averaging. It's not uncommon for those sessions to cost in the ballpark of 500 to 750 euros. OK, so I'm framing the next slide with that is the kind of just just so you understand where we're coming from. OK, all right. So here's the deal. We want the academy to be accessible. OK, and we're not throwing that word around as some sort of like, you know, cool catchphrase. We, we genuinely do. We, we've we've heard all the case studies of people who have wanted to do in-person training with us, but for a whole variety of different reasons, have not been able to come up with even 150 euros for the day as an example. OK, I get that. There are times in the year when it's so lean. I'm genuinely wondering where the next mortgage payment is coming from, and I'm not kidding. So I get it. OK, so genuinely, we have stripped back all the analysis of the cost that we're using for the different platforms. And we've worked out, like, what is the absolute MVP for us? Like, where, how, how cheap can we make this? And this is it, okay? $66 per day is basically the introductory tier, okay? That's what we're pricing it at. If you want to scale it up, because obviously it sounds great on a per day basis, but what is it on a yearly or a monthly basis? Well, it works out like this. It basically works out to the equivalent of $20 as a monthly fee. If you do the monthly program, if you sign up for the year, you pay your $200 up front, you get two months free. Okay. So basically you get an additional bonus, if you like, by signing up for the yearly program. Um, so it's access to the network and all the other perks that I've said as well. That's the bottom line. You know, we've, we, we've really skinned it as much as we can. And we've looked at so many other different platforms to try and understand exactly how their pricing model works and everything else as well. And I think it's worth sharing some of those because I think it's important that you kind of see it in context, see it for what it is, but in context. OK, so that's the pitch. Now, one other thing I just want to say, I said it's the introductory price. So this is really, really important because this only allows us to break even. All right. So if we want to scale this, if we want to bring in other trainers and grow the programs beyond just the core masterclass, which is our ultimate aim, then we will need at some point to actually effectively up the price. So what we're going to do, and we hope you think this is fair, you'll have your chance to give us your feedback in the comments and, and questions in a little while back. But for the first 100 people to sign up at this price, you won't just get it this year, you will get this price for life. OK, so basically, if you renew your membership next year for another program and continue on in the community, you will get exactly the same discounted price. It will only go to the higher price after we've hit 100 subscribers. And even then, there may be some offers and kind of incentives in there as well. Um, we'll be constantly revising the program and looking at what we can offer based on your feedback. But hopefully, the 66 cents a day or 55 cents a day if you take the annual program is fair. Because for me, to be honest, now the last time I was in Dublin City Centre, walking down Grafton Street, got a coffee, I dropped four euros and 50 cents. That's euros. That's about five bucks. That effectively is a full week's membership of the platform. Okay, so I think it's bloody fair. I hope you think it's fair as well. But here's it in context. Here's what other people are doing from, you know, resources that we both respect and, and, and platforms that we both have, you know, are both familiar with and actually, like I say, respect. Um, Mark, I'm going to throw it to you. Yeah. So um, if you look at the range, I mean, one of the things we would say is that we are doing something different from what most other people are doing. So that's why, again, it's not a kind of a like for like comparison, but just to throw it out there that, you know, again, if you're paying 
in person, you know, it's going to be obviously a lot more. And obviously if it's somebody hugely respected in the industry, it's, it's going to be kind of a higher end. Um, <clears throat> but I think you can see from those, whether it's live, whether it's recorded, these are the kind of the price ranges that you should expect to pay. And let me just be very clear. Uh, we are not saying that any of these are overpriced. Um, actually, I think these are all extremely reasonable because, like I say, the value of this skill to be able to, you know, for the rest of your days to create high quality content or maybe train on it um, is hugely valuable. So actually, when you look at it, even, you know, these prices that you're seeing here, extremely reasonable. Um, and so now when you see where we fit in, um, even though, like I say, it's hard to compare because we're not doing an exact like for like, you can see that actually we're doing our absolute best to make sure that this pricing is fair, no matter which currency you're paying in. Exactly. And again, just to be clear, like a lot of the platforms like Creative Live, Masterclass and Monthly and all those, they have a huge suite of different programs, like in the sense that they're not all based on the kind of mobile content creation model, which is what we're so heavily invested in. I mean, you know, you might want to do a cookery class. You're not going to find that in MCA, but you might find it in Creative Live. OK, so hyper focused on the core that we're basically trying to pursue, which is all to do with mobile content creation. So. This then begs the question, if we're going to be putting all our energy and time and everything else into MCA, what happens with the other activities that both of us are often involved in? Because, you know, I, I fully anticipate this is the first question. So I'm like, oh, my God, does this mean there's no more Mojo Fest? Let me just put your mind at ease. Sarah, I'm speaking directly to you. Um, um, let me put your mind at ease. Sarah just commented, I, I basically hope there's another Mojo Fest. So Mojo Fest, as I said a little bit while back, it's still still planned to happen in May. Again, I can't predict what's going to happen with COVID. They discovered a new bloody strain yesterday in France. So who knows what comes after Omicron? They're going to run out of letters probably, but that's another story. But the plan as of now, as you're watching this, is that come 11 and 12 of May, we will be in London for the next gathering at Mojo Fest. That is still 100% the plan. Um, I, I have platform uh, courses. I mentioned them earlier. So does Mark. They're not coming offline. So I have programs with uh, the Thompson Foundation Journalism Now platform that some of those courses are free, some are paid. They're staying online. They're still there if you want to do them. There's a free course that you can do, which is an introductory to mobile. That's out there. There are others. They're, they're not going anywhere. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be involved with, with LumaTouch on the, the LumaTouch Academy program with Caroline and Courtney. Courtney's in the chat right there. Um, and I'm 100% I'm still be going to do those, those specific two-hour in-depth program specific live training sessions for luma touch as well they're very much focused around luma touch and luma fusion specifically rather than the much much broader aspects of what we're going to be covering in mca and um, so those are still continuing as normal mojo fest group continues as normal several of the admins from the mojo fest group are actually in the chat right now they know this this is no secret like the mojo fest group has been a fantastic resource since 2015 I personally have some hangups about Facebook's uh, kind of algorithm, or, uh, you know, the opaqueness of how it works and everything um, and how you can never tell if a post is going to be seen by people and all other stuff. So those are my issues. I have no intention of doing anything negative about the Facebook group. It stays there. There's, you know, a great community and it will continue as is. And both Mark and myself will continue to do in-person training and two hour, three hour, you know, client based live sessions. None of that changes. The MCA is in addition to those activities, and it's very much tailored to this idea of, you know, once a week for two hours, we want to basically try and fill your brain with really, really useful, helpful knowledge that's going to take you another step down your kind of progress, your career, if you like, in relation to content, pro content creation. Um, I, I mentioned the Facebook group. Maybe I, I think most people here are already aware of it, um, but the Facebook group is going to continue. We just passed 7,000 members, which is pretty phenomenal for over 100 countries. So, I mean, it really is an amazing resource. The key thing, guys, is some, you know, some of you are going to get straight in with, well, why would I join MCA when I can just join the Facebook group? The Facebook group has never had a learning element. The Facebook group has just been a community and a network. So, yes, you have a problem. You can fire it into the Facebook group and probably about 75% of the time, you might actually get a, a good response and a useful response that fixes your problem. MCA, smaller community, hyper-focused, active participation and learning. That's the key difference, all right? Um, so, you know, what the hell do you get? So we've mentioned some of the perks, but the core thing is the six-month program, okay? And here's how it breaks up. Mark. So, um, like we said earlier, that the whole point of this is not to kind of overwhelm you with like a million you know, videos all, all in one go. It's to kind of take it step by step. So we kick off with um, photography essentials. So uh, again, both 
being able to take a, a good picture, understanding what makes an image work, you know, because of course anybody can point a phone and take a picture, but there's a difference between taking a picture and taking a picture that has an impact on the viewer or or puts across the message you're trying to put across. So we'll kick off with photography. And by the way, of course, you know, even if you're saying, well, I'm mostly interested in video, understanding photography and seeing the world like a photographer does is still incredibly valuable when you get to the video as well. Um, then we take it a level further. We get into advanced photography, start talking about things like time lapse, um, getting deeper into kind of how you can take those pictures and treat them and just make them look, you know, super high quality. You know, again, you know, we are not just about saying, well, you've created it on a phone, so it can kind of be a bit mediocre because it's been done on a phone. No, this is an incredibly powerful tool. And if you know what you're doing, you know, everything you create should be striving for the best quality, not just technically, but also in storytelling and the way you're, you know, connecting with your audience, all that kind of thing. Um, then we'll move into audio recording, editing microphones. Um, so often, you know, people are so focused on things like the video, they forget the audio. And even if you say, well, you know, people don't turn up the sound on social media, well, still the auto transcription softwares or platforms will still need decent audio to be able to do that. Um, filming interviews. I mean, you know, I was talking earlier about um, you know, social media managers and things like that. I mean, I remember going to a major event and the company I was making the videos for didn't you know, even have a stand at this event. Um, but we just did loads of interviews and made little videos and got them out there when the hashtag was trending. And it looked like, you know, if you looked at social media, it felt like this particular brand was kind of owning this event. They didn't even have a stand there. So that's the idea. Like if you can shoot interviews quickly, but also can you make those interviews look good? Maybe you're trying to do a documentary. You're trying to do create a certain kind of mood, an aesthetic. Um, think about locations, the lighting, the framing, all that kind of thing. And also with interviews, it's not just about um, getting a technically clean interview. It's, you know, like I said, I did psychology for three years um, at university alongside journalism. And I think um, that's been almost as useful because when it comes to doing interviews, it's like, how do you um, do it in a way that you're going to get people to forget about the technology and connect with you, give you the answers that you want. Um, so there's interviews and then presenting to camera. Now, neither myself or Glenn would naturally say that we are people who love being in front of the camera. Um, in fact, my very first time at university when I did a kind of a audition on camera, I had long kind of Kurt Cobain hair. And at the end of it, and this is complete truth, the kind of the lecturer said, um, you know, I was looking down, looking at the teleprompter. He said, look, I'm not sure if you need the journalism department, maybe you need the psychology department because that's how nervous I was on camera. But, you know, working at the BBC, I learned that it's a learnable skill. And lots of people right now, whether they're doing training, whether they're doing, um, you know, social media content, they're having to go in front of camera. And so that's a skill that's important to learn because as we know, putting faces on camera, people connect with people. So that's something we've also got in there. Um, shoot to edit. So there's a difference between what we call spray and pray, you know, just pray the camera around and pray there's something in there and shooting for the edit. Because if you want to work quickly and also if you want to work imaginatively, you need to understand how to kind of put a sequence together. And if you want to be creative and mix things up, you have to kind of almost be able to edit things in your head. So when you're shooting, you're, you know, planning for your shooting for your plan. And that's something which often people say, you know, video is really hard, really time consuming. No, video is really hard and time consuming and editing is really hard and time consuming when you don't have a plan. So if you're working towards a storyboard, a plan, you can quickly think of things and sequence things out then that's a hugely valuable skill. And then run and gun or observational filming. So um, I've worked in documentaries, um, was even nominated for a BAFTA, didn't win. I'm still very bitter. Anyway, um, but there's a very different style of filming if you have a controlled situation and you can set things up and say, move a little bit to the right, or you're filming something where you're observational and it's like present, pretend I'm not here, but you still want to capture all the vital moments and um, and do that on mobile. So we'll have a, a special section for that. So if you are wanting to create maybe a longer form or more of a documentary style of storytelling, then we've got you covered there as well. Glenn. Yeah, so those are the first set of modules. And then the rest of them, you know, again, it's the whole journey. So we'll start with an introduction of nonlinear editing on your uh, mobile device. We'll typically use apps like KineMaster and LumaFusion, of course, but others as well, because it's really important that you find one that really, really works for you. 
Um, we're going to deep dive into multi-track editing because that really is the essence of it, really understanding the power of the device. Because, you know, look, the bottom line is it's very, very simple to do a single track edit. And sometimes when I go on courses and I'm teaching, people kind of go, oh, yeah, I've edited stuff. It's like one track on iMovie. It's a good start. It's a really good start, but there's so much more power and potential in it. It's really worth knowing how far you can go. One key thing coming from a broadcast background, and I get asked this a lot by broadcast clients, is can you really take an edited package to broadcast delivery point using just your mobile device? And we'll unpack that on that actual course. But the short answer is, with the exception of the transcode from progressive to interlaced, Yes, you can. And we may even have someone actually in the chat, I'm not too sure right now, who may even have a solution for that in the cloud, working on that at the moment. But anyway, the bottom line is, is that yes, you can. But it's really important that you understand how to do a proper audio mix down and to finalize your package. It's not good enough to just do the picture edit. So we're going to do that idea of bringing it to a craft edit and finishing. And then, you know, social media, obviously a huge market, a growing market, and we will be pushing how to optimize your content for social by adding graphics, putting on your branding, adding subtitles. We will do a special session on social media strategies. I was lucky enough to do a workshop just before Christmas, actually, with Joanne Sweeney work um, on social media strategy. It was phenomenal. And it's just indicative of how we can tap into our mutual network of specialist trainers to come in and give us these uh, you know, supplemental courses that really give you the inside track on strategy and how to place yourself in your business. So all that's to come. And then obviously, well, Hopefully we're doing it reasonably well this evening, live streaming, podcasting, and also tapping into and developing your voice on live social audio. So like it's a fairly broad gamut. Notice nothing on drones, nothing on 360. Not saying we won't do them, but they're not going to be part of the core masterclass. But if there's a demand, we certainly will be open to the idea of looking at developing content in that space as well. Any final thoughts on that, Mark? Um, or just in a sense that, uh, you know, with the phone, you know, I was so say it's a Swiss army knife of media. You can do so many different things with it. Um, and so we we're going to cover all of those. Uh, but one of the things about this is that if you're a member of the community, you can kind of drive this as well. So if there are particular areas where it's, look, we really, really need this, then either myself, Glenn, or like Glenn was saying, we can bring people in to bring in that expertise so we can kind of deal with things. Maybe this, you know, for instance, when the uh, COVID lockdowns happened, uh, a lot of people were having to kind of, you know, broadcast from home or create content from home. So it's through very specific uh, topics. And both myself and Glenn, Glenn ran training courses on that. So maybe even if there's something specific that's around a particular time or particular challenge, we can do that. So this is the core of the modules, which covers a lot of ground, you know, um, and like Glenn was saying with social media, there's the actual the content creating, but also what do you produce? What's the strategy? How do the algorithms work? All that kind of thing. Um, but if you're a member, you also get to drive some of the live sessions and ask questions or, you know, request particular uh, content. So if we've got a huge demand for something, we'll respond to that demand. Exactly. You can even upvote topics within the actual community as well. So we'll have the opportunity to run polls and basically make sure that everything is tailored very much towards what the actual community is looking for. Okay. So if you do um, want those cooking videos from Glenn, that's how you do it. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. My <laughs> fajitas are, are internationally run out. What can I tell you? Listen, uh, Richard Lackey in comments a couple of minutes ago just sort of said, well, how can I sign up? I did have a ticker up there. But look, the short answer is you can scan that QR code right there and that's going to take you straight to the Academy. Just to be clear what the Academy is, because there will be a question about this in a minute. <clears throat> um, so it is a website. You can visit it on the web. Once you've signed up, you get user details to be able to log in. There is a dedicated app, which is hosted with a platform called Mighty Networks. Again, there's a question on that in a minute. Um, so Mighty Networks is the hosting platform the MCA basically sits within Mighty Networks. So if you get the actual uh, Mighty Networks app, just look for MCA and you're in. Again, username and credentials required to log in. Um, so, you know, that's where we're at. That's what we've come up with. We've given you a sense of the roadmap of where we want to go with it, with some of the programs that we have planned and also, you know, the idea that the Mojo database that we're working on as well. That's a work in progress. We have our platform already. We're just basically tailoring it right now and deciding exactly what will be included and what won't. But that will come soon. I'm not going to tie myself to a timeline, but soon, very soon, would be the plan. Um, so we're at 55 minutes. God, we can talk, Mark. I didn't. I, like, I, <laughs> I thought 35 at best. So there you go. Clearly, we can talk. But now we're going to throw it to you guys. So one, we would love to hear your comments, your feedback, or any questions that you might have. Again, the easiest way to do this is if you're sitting on YouTube and if you're watching it, 
please just fire a question into the comments. I'm watching them right now um, and I can skim through them. I can bring them up on screen and then hopefully we'll be able to answer some of them. There's some wonderful feedback coming back in from friends. I was going to say friends and family, but there's no family, not in my case. I mean, Mark. No. <laughs> uh, so Richie, thanks so much for the fear. Really, really appreciate it. Anna, Anna, thank you so much. You've already signed up. I just saw the notification to say you've joined the actual network. Really, really appreciate it. Delighted to have you with us. And, you know, don't see it as a one-way kind of linear thing. This is very much about being interactive and being able to share as well. So I'm looking forward to being able to liaise with you again. Um, Colleen, brilliant idea. Really, really appreciate it, Colleen. Thanks for the feedback on that. Appreciate it. Caroline wants Mark to bring back his long hair. I could do it. <laughs> but what's hidden behind these headphones is a ponytail that now runs halfway down my back, folks. I kid you not. But anyway. I think you should, we should upvote you at unraveling yeah, that and yeah, seeing nice the whole try. masterpiece there. Yeah, yeah, nice try. Go, go to my... Um, but if, if you sign up, Caroline, I'll consider it. <laughs> no, Caroline's <laughs> already in there. <laughs> um, very good. Uh, I'm just giving back up as well. So Richard asking that. Len has said, uh, exciting venture, creative learning program. Len is a, a lecturer and trainer in the US as well and a member of the Motifest community and former speaker and everything else as well. So lots of good friends. Colleen wants the ponytail. Why did I say anything? It's inevitable, isn't it? It's great. Guys, any questions that you have, please hit us up. Anything, any comments, anything you want to clarify? I will tell you that one thing I was asked earlier on, actually on Twitter, was is are we going to be able to... English, Len. Are we going to be able to accommodate groups of people so for instance in this particular case it was a brand and the brand um wanted to know if they could basically kind of sign up to the program and basically just give access to their staff now i'm working on that at the moment i do think it's going to be possible i don't think it would be possible to do is what i would call generic seats where you just give a login and everyone can use that same login it doesn't really allow that so i think we will have to itemize the users so everyone will have their own user account but if there's a, a cohort of 10 people for instance or more we may be able to offer some sort of a kind of a group discount for that number and um, i haven't really fully unpacked it but i'm still i'm still basically uh digging into it you know so fingers crossed that's going to work for us um Bernard has said, great presentation, fair offer, best look. Thank you, Bernard. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks for the feedback. Um, and uh, Colleen has dipped in with, what times are you thinking of having the live chats? Evening in GMT, yes. So we're planning, as of now, Colleen, we're planning to kick off in two weeks' time on Tuesday evenings between 7 and 9. Now, I don't know if Mark Settle is still on the live stream. I know he popped up briefly just asking what did he miss a while back. Um, <laughs> but if he is there, I'm going to give him full credit because he, he went... He went at me like a dog with the bone when we, we launched soft launch a couple of months back and sort of said, you can't have it so that it is only live because then, you know, something happens, your car breaks down, a family members or whatever it is, you're going to miss out. And that's not fair. We're going to have to do catch up. So here's the deal. As a concession, just for Mark, as a concession, I agreed, OK, the sessions will be recorded and they will be made available with an auto expiry of seven days. OK, so you will be able to see them. And by the way, the way that we're doing it means that technically, technically, it would be possible to download the video, although I'm really hoping that that's something that people won't do because then they could pop up on YouTube and the whole thing is very, very messy. But nonetheless, within the community, closed group and everything, it basically will be um, available for playback for seven days from the day that the live happens. And, and of course, if people have ex extenuating circumstances, we can always make extra concessions. But that is the plan. <laughs> But it's worth mentioning that um, one of the values about having a cohort, so that's when a bunch of people go through things at the same time, um, there's a real kind of energy to things. And also, you know, if you're slacking off a bit, you get inspired by other people who have gone out and done their exercise or posted a piece of content and all that kind of thing. So I think the community aspect is really important. And also the... Um, the kind of the hive brain, the idea that we have a lot of people in the community who know a lot of, about different things, um, it's, it will kind of accelerate your learning as well, because we'll have so many people to kind of share experience with. So um, again, you know, Glenn mentioned the Facebook group. I think one of the things we were thinking is it kind of has hit a ceiling of what you can achieve. When So all this is about how do we take things to the next level? How do we firstly help people get the skills they need, but also, you know, things like the um, accreditation and later on the directory. So somebody can search and say, I need a, a mobile content creator in Chennai in India, and they can look and see a list of people and links to their work and all that kind of thing. So not only are we helping people get the skills, we're hoping people to kind of monetize those in the, in the long run as well. So that is the kind of the big picture is like, how do we grow this? And so that's why we've taken this particular approach. 
Excellent. Good stuff. Again, I'm just looking, dipping in uh, the comments here. I will come back to that one, Courtney. Sorry, I haven't missed you. Um, Kate, I just want to give you a shout out. Kate, I just noticed you've popped in now into the group as well. You're very, very welcome. We will be hosting some live sessions in there very soon as well, but really appreciate having with us. Um, I've also seen this comment from Fred. Uh, clever concept. Thank you, Fred. Very much appreciated. How are we going to address the time zones? Well, so part of that now, and that's, again, going back to that Mark Settle discussion, will be this idea of, of having it so it's available for catch-up. We will analyze the actual the audience cohort and look at scheduling times that work. If we need to report to do sessions more than once a week, because there's luckily two of us, then it is definitely a possibility that we would do an early one and a late one to try and accommodate different time zones. Right now, the vast majority of people have signed up have all been GMT or GMT ballpark, as in mostly European. And um, if we see a lean towards the U.S. state side, we definitely will look at doing ones that actually work for the uh, the U.S. states. Uh, Christ can't even talk anymore. The U.S. Uh, time zones. Um, so hopefully that addresses that one, Fred. Um, so Courtney had the question about deep dive on gear, lenses, cages, etc. Courtney. No better man, sir. Like, I mean, as I said, I'm not at all saying I know everything. Far from it. Every day I learn something new. If there's someone out there that knows more than me, i.e. you, then I would be 100% happy to have you come in and to actually present a specific session and to talk about the amazing movies that you have made with your smartphone. So, you know, being within the community, like I say, it is a community-driven thing. And let me be clear. There's one thing, because there's a lot of people who are actually commenting now on, on, on the uh, YouTube channel in particular. Lots of you are trainers as well, and I don't want any of you to feel that I'm basically pulling the wool out or the rug out from under you at all, because I would like you to see the MCA as another platform for you to utilize and to reach another audience. So we will, as soon as we reach a reasonable cohort and we're at break even point, we're going to start to reinvest into bringing other trainers in to offer pop up courses as well, and you will be paid for those. So it's more than just the two of us. It definitely is community at heart. Um, Colleen, thank you so much for the shout out and it's been a pleasure to have you on the courses really really appreciate that feedback Kate just asked when is Mojo Fest I think it's 11 and 12 of May Kate I really should know off that off by heart shouldn't I but it's been a while since I looked at the website uh, but if you check mojofest.eu it's uh, London based I haven't really put any speakers up yet because I'm still in conversations with people but it will pop in the next month or so uh, but yeah 11 and 12th of May based in uh, London and it is free this year um, Jordan asked, is this aimed at beginners? It will be useful for those with more advanced skills. I'm hoping it's going to be for everybody, Jordan. Um, there's no question that we want to make it so that we're onboarding people. I don't want to, novices to feel that they're being excluded. But often on the live sessions I do these days, I have four or five questions right up front instead of an icebreaker for in-person that basically asks people to rate themselves in relation to the specific skills I'm covering. So what we can do is if we have people who basically, you know, say I'm a one out of 10 on everything, then we always have the opportunity within the group to circle back to those people and sort of say, if you'd like to do a little bit more coaching, we're happy to actually do that with you to make sure that you feel that module is done and you're happy to move on. Again, success is our key thing. An awful lot of the pre-recorded courses, they're stacked towards the trainer, to be fair. Like I'm one of them, so I'm telling you the truth in the sense that you're looking at volume. If you stuff up on Udemy, Udemy will auto discount courses from your requested price by 80% and put it out for a tenner at times. You have no control over that. It's all about volume. This is not that. This is bespoke. This is small group. This basically is live and interactive. And it really is about making sure that you hit the learnings. That's the key thing. Um, uh, Courtney is as good as agreed. And I'm going to make it public now so that everyone has witnessed this. He's just said he will do that, which is really, really nice. I have <laughs> said, uh, nice 2022 startup, great initiative, gather community and opportunities. Thank you, Ayaz. That's fantastic. No really pointed questions, which I guess is probably a good thing. Um, I'm going to give it one more minute because we'll just cross the hour and then I'm going to just do the quiz. Okay, because the quiz is a bit of crack. Hopefully, let me just recap it again now because I want everyone to have made sure that they have gotten their Kahoot app installed uh, so we can do this quiz. It's a bit of fun. Like I say, basically what we're going to do is we're going to give away access to the, the platform. Can I also just say, because there's three or four people in the comments over here who were beta testers within the group. In other words, you already have access. So if you think you're getting a refund for money you didn't pay, I'm not going to use Irish swear words, but there's a few I could give you. I'll, if you. If one of those people win this, I'll come up with a suitable alternative price. Is that fair enough? Is that fair enough? Can't be fair in that, right? Um, okay. Last chance for any questions. I'm watching the stream. 
I'd also, well, very quickly, because I'm getting notifications when I'm trying to watch the camera, uh, we've had a few new people sign up, so I'm going to give them a shout-out because I really appreciate it. So Kate, um, shout-out to Kate Middleton already. Um, Anna, also shout-out to Anna. Anna, delighted to have you with us. Daryl, Daryl joined us in the very, very first Mojo Tour. One of the first ventures that Mark and myself did as co-trainers. We tore off around Ireland for a week in a minibus. It was great crack. Daryl, lovely to see you. Thanks for joining. Stephen Rafferty, Mr. Lackey is in. This man is a bloody genius when it comes to color grading and everything. And I so want him to do a course for us. Richard, hope you're listening. Um, Dirk Jankok has joined us as well. Like there are people popping up in the community literally as we speak, which is phenomenal to see. I'm really excited about that. That's great. Okay. We're over an hour. I really wanted to keep it under an hour. So let's do this bloody quiz. Now, if you have never played a Kahoot quiz before, let me at least explain the kind of background to it, okay? In a moment, I'm going to launch the Kahoot website that has 15 questions. Some of the questions are multiple choice. So you get the question, and then on your phone, when you've got the Kahoot app running, you will get four colored markers on screen that correlate to an answer that you're going to see on, on the live stream. And you just press the button for the answer that you believe to be correct. We'll see how it works in a second. Some of the questions, not many, but a couple of the questions are basically uh, true or false. So even simpler. So it's either a red button or a blue button. Yes or no. Now, can I just say, winning the game is not just a matter of getting all the questions right. It is also a matter of answering the questions as fast as you can, because there's a countdown on each question. You get either 15 or 20 seconds to answer. And basically, the people who answer correctly the fastest are the people who go to the top of the pile. And there is a leaderboard, so you'll be able to witness how people are doing for the crack. Okay, you all on for this? Hopefully you have the Kahoot app. I know from the last time I used it, which is just before Christmas now, so tiny bit rusty, you have to go through two pages, if I remember rightly. You don't have to pay anything. It's not going to ask for your credit card, but you do have to put your name in and you do have to give them their age. I would suggest, if you're going through that stage right now, that you just say that you're using it for educational purposes. Because, hey, that's what we're all here for today. All right? So with that as the kind of background to it, let's see if this works. I'm going to see if this launches on my laptop. Bear with me. Fingers friggin' crossed it works. Yes. Yes. Can you see it, though? I'm not seeing it. I'm still seeing the uh, QR code. Yes. Wait a second now. Wait a second now. That's because... It's best to build a bit of suspense in there, isn't it? it is, isn't it, though? Yeah. yeah. No, I know, I know why that is. I know why that is. Let me, let me do it now. Hang on a second. Seamless. Yeah, yeah. Everything <laughs> was going we so well. Everything. This works. This really works. <laughs> this really works. I'm just going <laughs> to do that one. Uh, that one. Share. Jump back to Kahoot. Optimize it to full screen. There you go. Ah, Hallie, I could have used swear words, but I won't. Okay, okay. So exciting, right? Does it display a pin on YouTube? Wait, wait for it. It's going to come. So here's the deal. In a second now, when I hit the button over here, the classic mode button, you're going to see this on-screen display, and there will be a game pin. Yes, yes, I, as we will make the whole recording available for playback on YouTube for sure. Um, anyway, there will be a game pin that will pop up on screen. And in your app, at the bottom of the screen where you see the little circle with the four buttons, if you just tap that, it will ask you to enter the game pin to begin the game. And don't panic. I'm not going to start it until I see a few people in there. And I will see you as you join live. This is all fun and frolics. All new stuff. Let's see. Here we go. Game pin coming. I'm going to take me and Mark off screen. Oh, no, you won't hear me if I do that. So we got to stay. There's the game pin. There's the game pin. Mark, do you want to do it for the crack just to see if it works? Do you have okay, so... Uh, Wait, no, maybe I... Just I'll, the... I'll just... if Yeah, so I'm hitting the enter pin button at the bottom of my screen, and the pin that I'm looking at is 152442. Four, 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 oh, yep, so we've got a few... There you go. Look, look. Anna is in. Babs is in. Colin is in. Richie is in. Mal is in. Wow. Mick is in. Christ, there's a lot... Oh, this is going to be a big game. God, I hope we don't pass 20 because I only got a license for about <laughs> 50 or 50. I, got, I can't remember. Um, Daryl is in. <laughs> Alan is in. Where's that MCA? Gonna, in? As, soon as, we, as soon as we hit 20, I'm hearsing start. <laughs> um, don't join, Mark. Don't join. Whatever you do, don't join. <laughs> I put there, I stopped. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. We're, we're, we're at 15. Okay. People still coming. Guys, it, it's got to stop. It's got to start at 20. So whoever else is in, Dawn is in. Rachel is in. If you miss out, I'm really sorry. DM me. We, we can run it again. Okay, we're at 17. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay, 18. As soon as we hit 20, the game starts. 
18. Last round, I feel like a quiz master, so, so, so bad. Okay, we're at 18. I think we've stayed static at 18, so I'm going to run it now, guys. Are we ready? No, Sarah is in. Okay, Sarah's in. We're at 19. One more. Anybody? I feel like one of those guys that works on those those roundabout things. At the... Here, Phyllis is in. Phyllis, you're in. That's it. We're starting. Sorry if you missed it. We're starting. Here we go. Stand by, everybody. Now, question is going to pop up. Remember the options. Answer it on your phone. Stand by. Here we go. Question one is a quiz, so four answers. What app did Hollywood director Steven Soderbergh use to shoot two movies on an iPhone? What app did he use to shoot two movies on an iPhone? There's your choices. So hit the color that corresponds to the answer that you believe to be correct. There should be music. Where's the music? Oh, I turned the music off earlier, didn't I? Yeah. No. It was playing a moment ago, but anyway. Okay, Filmic Pro was the correct answer. 14 people got it right. Several people didn't answer and two people got it wrong. Um, Okay, that's absolutely fine. Let me go forward. Next. Okay, so Colleen. Colleen, there's the leaderboard. Colleen was first in. Okay, I'm going to keep the music playing. Colleen was first in. Courtney was a very close second. That's very, very tight. Okay, guys, stand by. Next question. Here we go. It's another quiz question. How many internal mics does an iPhone 12 Pro have? Okay, this is a little bit loaded, and if Settle is part of this, he's going to definitely argue with me about this. But um, anyway, it's one of those answers. <laughs> Ten seconds left. Time nearly up. Here we go. 16 answers in. Ooh, wow. Everyone was split on that one. Well, you see, here's a reason that you should come and do our course. Um, okay. <laughs> now, the correct answer is three. Correct answer is, in fact, three. Now, I said iPhone 12 because I wasn't sure if the 13 had four on it. So it was a bit loaded. But anyway, let's see who's the leaderboard now. Courtney has pipped Colleen. Jordan is now tight in second place. Bab, see, it can move. It can move. Here we go. Next question. Stand by. Samsung is from which country? No one has answered this question yet. You see, <laughs> I'll give you an, I'll give you a hint. It's not North Korea. Three seconds. Come on. Ooh, time up. Fourteen people got their answers in, and most people had it right. It is indeed South Korea. Very good. Now, what's the leaderboard looking like? Let's see. Jordan has pipped up into first place now. Okay, very good. I like this. Okay, here we go. Next question. It's a quiz. Four answers. Stand by. When was the first iPhone released? Here we go. 15 seconds. Okay, yeah, most people have that one right. It is indeed 2007. I've had one or two people message me popping up there saying that they're their audio on the quiz is actually behind. So they're losing a delay, basically, on the live stream, which is challenging their ability to basically do the, the questions here. So what I would say is, if that's happening to you, read the text of it first, because it pops up before I say it. That would be the best bet. Um, I will bear that in mind in future. I will extend out the time for an extra five or 10 seconds if necessary. Okay. Um, most people had that one right. Let's see who is on the leaderboard now. Jordan is holding top place. Yeah, very good. And he's taking quite a lead there. Okay, next question. Remember, there's 15 in total. Here we go. No, that's right, Courtney. There's no text on the phone. You have to watch the screen for the question. So everybody's going to excuse is going to be the slow loading time, isn't it? I knew all the answers. It just was a bit of a delay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Everyone had that one, right? That's right. Blackberry came end of life. I think last in the last couple of days, actually, it's kind of gone. So there we go. Uh, very good. Now, what's the leaderboard looking like? Is Jordan still in the lead? Yes, Jordan is stretching out that lead. Very good. Wow. Jordan must have super fast broadband. Okay, next question. Here we go again. It's a quiz. Now, this is going to separate those hardcore trainee people. Where was the first Mojocon back in 2015? Ten seconds.
Very good, we're up to 16 answers in that one, and, oh, interesting, some people go away, yeah, Mojo Con, Mojo Fest was Galway. actually the last Mojo Con was Galway as well, but yeah, so most people had it right, let's see who we got on the leaderboard now, Jordan's still in the lead, Richie Donlin sneaking up behind, very good, here we go, next question. It's plugging your computer, Glenn. I just saw that too. <laughs> Powered, all good, okay, so there you go, first iPad released what year? 10 seconds. Sixteen people have answered. Okay, very good. Let's see. The correct answer was 2010. I actually would have got that one wrong. But there you go. Leaderboard now is looking like, oh, yep. Yeah, Jordan is still ahead, but it's close. Look how close it is. There's just 30 odd points in the difference between Richie and Jordan. It's a two person race. This is a simple true or false. All about the speed, guys. All about the speed. Use Instagram Live best to shoot in portrait. True or false? Five seconds. Excellent. Six people came in and 11 people said it was true. And of course, when we meet up in May in London, you can fight about this with Mark because that was his question. <laughs> right. Let's see how we're doing leaderboard now. Did Richie pip Jordan? No, Jordan's still in the lead, though. It's still damn close. They're very, very close. OK, here we go. We're up to question nine. What platform inspired <coughs> Instagram stories? Mark, you can read the next five. I'm losing my voice. Eight seconds. Stand by. Okay, here we go. Yes, I think most people had that right. It was indeed Snapchat. Let's have a look at the leaderboard. Oh, Richie Ooh. is with Jordan. It's all happening at the top there. Wow. Okay, now that was, he was, Richie was very fast in that one. He's made up a lot of points. Very good. Okay, Mark, over to you. Next question. Okay, how many modules are there in the six-month MCA Masterclass? Let's see if you're paying attention. Was it nine? Was it 11? Was it 13? Or was it 15? We won't ask for bonus points. Can you name them? <laughs> Damn, should have done that. <laughs> We'd probably get it wrong, though, wouldn't we? <laughs> okay, very good. Yes, 13 was the correct answer. Most people went for 15. Okay, 13 was the correct answer. There we go. Now let's have a look. Richie is still in the lead, and he's stretched it out. It's 300 points in the difference now, okay? Long way to go. Long way to go. Still five questions. Here we go. Next one. There are over 7,000 members of the Mojo Fest Facebook group. True or false? Are there 7,000 members of the Mojo, Facebook, Mojo Fest Facebook group? True or false? There was a slide. Yes, indeed, it is true. And everyone got that right. There you go. That's good news. Okay. <laughs> Colleen. Colleen is sneaking, still, up there. sneaking up there behind Richie. Yeah, very good. Amazing how it can change over time, huh? Okay, very good. Here we go. Next question. The Mobile Creator Academy is built on which platform? Tribe, Dis Disciple Media, Mighty Networks, or Passion.io? And Glenn did mention it. I so did. This is Literally. the platform it's built on. Stand by. Okay, and the answer was Mighty Networks. I did mention it, and I mentioned that that's where the apps will be found as well. So Mighty Networks, correct answer. Oh, Colleen has pipped Richie and Jordan's back there. Len is sneaking up, though. Look at this. It's so tight between Len and Colleen now. Wow. Len has a streak with 10 correct answers in a row. Go, Len. Yeah, awesome. All right, here we go. Simple, true or okay. false, all about true speed. The Mobile Creator Academy Mighty Network has an app for iOS and Android. True or false? Very good. So the correct answer was, yes, it does. There's an iOS version and an Android version of the Mighty Networks app. Very good. Let's see where the leaderboard is bringing us. 
Colleen is holding his lead. He's holding his lead. Very good. But Len's continued his streak, though, so you can't yeah. back off. Yeah, it's all about speed now, Len, if you want to pip him. Okay, here we go. Question 14 of 15. Just two left. That's true or false. The MCA subscription price will be 66 cents per day for the first 100 subscribers. True or false? You're loving this music, aren't you, Glenn? I had to pay for this music, Mark. <laughs> okay. Uh, most people got that right. Uh, somebody's going to argue with me and say, but you said 55 cents as well. But yeah, okay. Well, right. Most people got that right. Uh, how's the leaderboard looking? Oh, Colleen is holding his lead. Jordan's sneaking up behind him again. Right. Final question, guys. It's going to be all about the timing. It's all in it. Okay. You standing by? Here we go. Simple, true or okay. false? Over the next 12 months, other optional courses will be made available to members within MCA. Some paid, some free. True or false? Very good. Yeah, that's true. That's the plan. We will expand it and we will offer other courses as well as part of the program. Excellent. Right. The final leaderboard. Deep in, take a breath. Let's see how we do here. In third place. It is Mal. In second place. It is Jordan. And in first place, stand by. It is. Colleen Duffy. <laughs> Richie and Len were in fourth and fifth place, respectively. Well done, Colleen. That's great. I'll reach out to you a little bit later on to give you access into the actual platform. Uh, congratulations on winning that. But that, guys, as well, is a little bit of the taster of the type of interactivity that we'll do. So at the end of every learning session that we do, there will be a quiz. And we're already in negotiations with people to get prizes specifically for those quizzes. So to give you an example, one of the things, I won't mention the brand, but one of the examples right now is that at every single learning session, there will be either a 50 or 100 euro voucher value for a prize. So like you'd almost win back your actual um, more than your monthly fee if you won it. And um, so that's the plan. So it will be, you know, fun, bit of crack, bit of fun, reaffirms the learning. Most importantly, this is what I mean by gamification. And ultimately, it basically, you know, will make sure that you take away all the skills that we're offering. That's the key thing. So look, we've, we've gone to an hour and 22 minutes. <laughs> Holy, I won't swear I could get blocked on YouTube or something, but that's pretty bloody impressive, Mark. Um, okay, not going to waste the rest of your evening, guys. Really, really appreciate it. I don't know if there's any final comments or anything else you want to throw into us. Um, nice feedback and everything from Richie coming in there, Colleen as well. And guys, really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, that's it. I, parting words. I, I don't know, Mark. Anything else you want to add? Well, firstly, just a reminder of, you know, it's there, you can sign up, or if you know somebody else you think it would be useful to, pass it on to them. Um, but the clear thing is that this isn't just an online course. There are live trainings, there are, there'll be guest uh, people, guest speakers and guest um, trainee, tra trainers. Um, there'll be the community, the kind of certification. And again, we're looking to build longer term things like the directory and all that kind of thing. So we're kind of properly building a network here and hoping to take things to the next level and if you do have any questions just whether it's in the facebook group or drop us drop us an email if you've got any issues or maybe you're from an organization and you're thinking how can you get a, a few people on here how would that work um contact us but uh, what i would say is that um we're committed to basically uh making this a real kind of hub not just for people who are new wanting to learn things, but those who are experienced and kind of want to take things to the next level and also share their own expertise. So we're really excited about it. If you've got any questions, let us know. Um, and if you have been convinced by what we've been saying over the last hour and however long it's been, uh, you can go to the link right now and join us there. So hopefully see you in there. But Glenn, any part, final thoughts from your little, um, it looks like a kind of Amsterdam brothel behind you there? Yeah, well, I was trying to get the color, but it doesn't quite match, does it? But, you know, <laughs> what can I say? I, all 10 out of 10 for effort, right? But, hey, um, no, look, I, I think we've summed it all up. Hopefully, we've answered all your questions. Look, the bottom line is 
both of us are available on social media to take any additional questions you might have after you've digested everything we've talked about tonight. I'm going to just pop up on screen where our socials for the actual platform are. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, but if you want to reach out to us, you can reach out to us on the dedicated Twitter account for the Mobile Creator Academy on Twitter. We're at mobile underscore creators on Instagram because mobile underscore creators was gone, we are at mobile creators. So you can reach out to us on either one of the two of those or on our personal accounts anywhere that you fancy as well. You're more than happy to fire any questions at us. Um, look, we've had a fairly consistent number of people with us for the whole evening, which is phenomenal. Really appreciate your participation for joining us. Hopefully you found it useful and some food for thought. Again, if there's anything that you're on the fence about that you want a bit more clarity on, do please reach out. We really would be happy to answer any additional questions. But that's it um, from us for this evening. Uh, thanks so much. Happy New Year. I know it's a bit late now and everything, but sure, it's only a few days in. Happy New Year. Hope that uh, 2022 is a better one for all of us. And on that bombshell, Mark, parting words? Uh, yeah, just great to see some of the names in there, some familiar, some not. Um, and yeah, let's kind of breathe another level of new life into this community and um, look forward to seeing you either online or maybe even at Mojo Fest. So um, take care, have a good year and really appreciate. I know you could be watching something like Netflix now. So spending this time with us, we hugely appreciate. Okay, guys, on that bomb, thank you so much. Take care and hope to see you soon. If not sooner, hopefully May in London.